The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Here's Love in Your Eye from Jack's own picture, the big broadcast of 1937. Hang out the welcome signs. Strike up the band. Jack Benny's back with us again. Tonight marks the beginning of Jack's and Mary's third year on the air for Jell-O, and they're raring to go. And judging from all the letters we've had, you're raring to listen. So everybody's happy, and lots of the credit for that goes to you, our audience. Because your enthusiastic support of Jell-O makes it possible for us to continue these programs. The makers of Jell-O have asked me to thank you for your encouragement. And they've also asked me, as official Jell-O spokesman, to thank Jack and Mary for all their grand work in the past, and to wish them great good luck on the new series they begin tonight. So let's give six delicious cheers for the one and only genuine Jell-O and for Jell-O's one and only Jack Benny. Ladies and gentlemen, after four months' vacation, we present to you the man the whole world is waiting to hear. New York, New York. Who's on the air tonight, dear? Jack Benny. Oh, let's go to a movie. Denver, Colorado. Oh, Daddy, let's go see a picture show tonight. Jack Benny is on the air. I want to see you in Tempo. Glasgow, Indiana. Heather, who's on the radio tonight? Jack Benny. Well, it'll cost me money, but let's go to the movies. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you the man who has done more for moving pictures than any other comedian, Jack Benny. Hey, Don. Don, would you mind trying one more town? Uh, which one? Oh, anyone. Say, uh, Waukegan, Illinois. Okay. Waukegan, Illinois. Who's on the air tonight, Mr. Benny? My son, Jack. What a boy. <laughs> oh, then you're not going to the movies tonight. No, I saw the picture. <laughs> uh, do you want me to tune in any other time? No, Don, that's enough. Huh? Well, Jello again. This is Jack Benny, who has just returned from his vacation. And I want to tell you, it's great to be back again. Back with this old gang of mine. You mean me, Jack? I sure do. Let's give Wilson a nice big hand. Yes, sir. <laughs> but no kidding, Don, you look swell. Fit as a bass fiddle. <laughs> I don't know, you're so tan and rugged. Oh, uh, thanks, Jack. You look tan and rugged, too. Uh, where did you so. spend your vacation? Well, Don, <laughs> I worked uh, most of the summer at the Paramount Studio, but I did manage to get a couple of weeks off. So I went to uh, Saratoga Springs to the races. I wasn't very lucky, though. Oh, Saratoga Springs. Oh, yes, I lost an uncle there once. Hmm. Well, I had to put up cash. Oh, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and then I spent a couple of weeks camping up in the Adirondacks. Oh, that's right. Uh, you told me you were going to do that. Yeah, and by the way, Don, I want to thank you for lending me your shirt. Oh, that's all right. It was swell. I had the only tent with a soft collar. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that would go over, didn't I? I like that a lot. Uh, what have you been doing the last few months, Don? Well, uh, I had your job. I was master of ceremonies on the Jell-O summer show. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, you know, Jack, uh, the Jell-O sales increased tremendously. They did, huh? Yes, sir. And, and that means that while I was telling jokes, more people than ever before went out and bought Jell-O. While you were telling jokes. <laughs> well, that's a boost for the product only, you know. Come in. <laughs> Uh, pardon me. Uh, Lewis is my name. I'm a reporter on the radio guide. Oh, yes, yes. I'm here to get an interview. Oh, of course. Certainly. Uh, pardon me, Don. Has Kenny Baker arrived yet? Not yet. Uh, thanks. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, uh, I'm uh, Jack Benny. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about, Don? Oh, you were saying how tan and rugged I look. Oh, yeah, I thought we went further than that. Uh, oh, Don, look who's here. Hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mary. 
<laughs> well, well, well. Murray, it's good to see you. You're looking great. You haven't changed a bit. You look good, too, Jack. Gee, you're so tan and ragged. <laughs> Mary, it's not ragged, it's rugged. I know, but who can get a laugh? Oh, Mary, always thinking of the program. Well, honey, have you had any fun? Did you have a nice vacation? I did until I had to go to the hospital. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't either, Mary. Yeah, and you know, Jack, I had the cutest doctor you ever met. Yeah? You ought to see him. Blue eyes and a little mustache. Mm, what a doll. A doll, huh? Yeah. Last week, he took my tonsils out. Gee, am I excited. Why are you excited now? Next week, he's taking me out. <laughs> Oh. oh, boy, is he handsome. Yeah, yeah. Say, Jack. What? How do you get more tonsils? You can't get any more. Gee, I wish I had something else I didn't need. Mary, cut it out, will you? Uh, pardon me, has Kenny Baker arrived yet? No, Mr. Lewis, but if there's any information you want, I'm always glad to talk to a reporter. No, thanks, I'll wait. Who is that, Jack? Oh, some fellow. Well, Mary, didn't you take a vacation at all last summer? Oh, sure, Jack. I went to Coronado Beach for three weeks. You did, huh? Yeah, and I brought you a little present. Here. Oh, Mary, my, what a pretty seashell. <laughs> my goodness, huh? See, just what I needed. <laughs> well, let's see what it says on it. Oh, souvenir of Coronado Beach. Oh, gee. And you know, Jack, if you put it up to your ear, you can hear music. No kidding. I'll try it. Mary, I don't hear any music. You don't? No. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you got to put your other ear up to a radio. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, well, Jack. Yes, Don? Uh, Phil Harris is here. You haven't forgotten about him, have you? Oh, Phil, of course. Gee, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a new addition to our little group, that famous orchestra leader, Phil Harris. <laughs> yes, Phil. Thank you. And thank you, Jack. I want to apologize, Phil, for not introducing you sooner. Oh, that's all right. You know how it is, the opening program and all the nervousness and excitement and that reporter bothering me all the time, you know. <laughs> but Jack, uh, he didn't ask you for an interview. That's what bothers him. <laughs> Does not. Oh, Mary, this is Phil Harris. Phil, this is Mary Livingston. Hello, Mary. I've always wanted to meet you, and I'm very happy that we're going to be together. Oh, thank you. I'll be glad to have dinner with you tonight. <laughs> Mary, he didn't ask you to go to dinner. What a cheap guy. Don't mind her. One thing I want to tell you, Phil, you're going to enjoy being with us. I never interfere with anything. You can always pick out your own music. In fact, you can be your own boss. And not only that, I'll always see that you get the best joke. What joke? The one about being your own boss. Quiet. Well, Phil, how about a little number? Let's hear the new orchestra. Huh? All right, Jack. For the first number, we'll play Bye Bye Baby. Well... Uh, pardon me, Mr. Benny. Has Kenny Baker arrived yet? No, but I'll be glad Never to... Never mind. I'll wait. Mm. <laughs> play, Don. Or John. Or what's your first name, Phil? Steve. Oh, yeah. Play, Frank. <laughs> Look, Porter. <laughs>
was uh, Bye Bye Baby, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra, with Johnny Green at the piano on another program. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to tell you, Phil, as one musician to another, that excellent music. Thanks, Jack. Say, Phil, you don't mind if I describe you to our listeners, do you? After all, they will be interested. In no, it. but, uh, well, don't build me up too much. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, folks, in describing Phil, I might say he's tall, rather good-looking, the ladies like him, but still he's the kind of a guy you can trust with your best girl. If you can trust your best girl. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jack, why don't you quit ribbing? I'm not ribbing you, Phil. I just happened to run across a joke. Well, you're about due. <laughs> First time your orchestra laughed at anything. You know? <laughs> the first program. Well, anyway, folks, I said before... Phil is the romantic tri type. <laughs> well, I didn't mean that. Well, that was really that was really a slip. I didn't mean that. Uh, Phil is the romantic type. Yes, sir. He's got fire in his eyes, a wave in his hair, a smile on his face, and rhythm on the range. <laughs> Quiet, Irene. Okay, Tim. You know, Jack, Phil Harris is cute, isn't he? Yeah. He looks just like my doctor. Mary, forget that doctor, will you? Gee, I can't get him off my mind. Oh, doctor. I wish you'd have stayed home till you came out of the ether. <laughs> I suppose I'm going to hear about that guy all season, huh? Uh, pardon me, are you sure Kenny Baker hasn't arrived yet? No, Mr. Lewis, I know he hasn't. Then you, Mr. Benny, tell me. Do you think radio is here to stay? Yes, sir. Well, I'm not. Goodbye. <laughs> I knew I'd get an interview. <laughs> hey, Don. Yes, Jack? Uh, open the closet and let Kenny out. Okay. Here he is. <laughs> Hiya, Kenny. Hello. Oh, Kenny, you're not sore because I locked you in the closet, are you? No, but you didn't have to hang me on a hook. Well, I'm always neat. <laughs> hey, I was saving you for that big entrance. You heard that applause, didn't you? Oh, sure. Thanks, Jack. Certainly. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Mary. Hiya, Don. Hello, Kenny. Say, Kenny, have you noticed uh, Don's put on a lot of weight? Yeah, he looks so ton and rugged. <laughs> I think we've carried that joke far enough. And Kenny, I want you to shake hands with our new orchestra leader, Mr. Harris. Glad to know you, Kenny. Gee, it's a Phil. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. And why didn't you stop him? Oh, I took your line. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> well, tell me, uh... <laughs> tell me, Kenny. <laughs> tell me, Kenny, what kind of a vacation did you have? <laughs> huh? Oh, pretty fair. It was all right, I guess. Uh, where were you? Well, I spent two months in Catalina, four weeks in New York... And a half hour in the closet. Well, it wasn't his fault. Boy, is he dumb. He is not. He is, too. He didn't even notice I had my tonsils out. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Mary. Why don't you tell him about that doctor you're so crazy about? He's crazy about me, too. Yeah. Well, Kenny, it's been a long time since we heard you sing. How about a little number right now? All right, Jack. I'll sing The Way You Look Tonight. Oh, your voice is better than that, Kenny. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, I didn't think that was going to go over that big, did it? Well, uh, go ahead. Oh, the phone. Wait a minute. Hello? Yes? Oh, it's for you, Mary. Uh, hello? Yes? Oh, hello, doctor. It's my doctor, Jack. All right, stop trembling. <laughs> How are my tonsils? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> mm. What's that? You have... Well, I've been thinking of you, too. We should leave her romance out of this program. Shh. What? <laughs> oh, doctor. No. No, doc, you'll have to coax me. No. Mm. No, you'll have to coax me. You'll have to coax me. Fine. Oh, doctor, this oh. is so sudden. What does he want, Mary? A check for the operation. <laughs> Some nerve. I'm glad I met Phil Harris. Yeah, sing, Kenny. Glow, 
stop thinking of you and the way you look tonight. Lovely, with your smile so warm and your cheeks so soft, there is nothing for me but to love you just the way you look tonight. With each word your tenderness grows, tearing my fear of Kenny Baker singing The Way You Look Tonight, written by Jerome Kern for the picture Swing Time. Well, Kenny, your vacation must have done you a lot of good because you're singing better than ever. I mean, your voice has a better quality. It's clearer and sweeter. Thanks, kid. <laughs> kid, well, time marches backward. <laughs> Say, Jack, uh, will you do me a favor? What is it? Hmm? I brought my girl over to our first broadcast, and she's dying to meet you. She just wants to say hello. Oh, I didn't know you had a girl. Sure. I met her this summer over at Catalina. <laughs> Boy, she thinks I'm pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> Bring her in, Kenny. I'll be glad to meet her. All right. She's kind of dopey, though. <laughs> yeah, I figured that. Yeah. <laughs> now bring her in, huh? Come here, honey. I want you to meet Jack Benny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hello. Hello yourself and see how you like it. <laughs> well, well, so you're the little girl from Catalina. Yeah. What's your name? Lena Cat. Ah, <laughs> oh, go on. Who told you to say that? Kenny, ain't he screwy? <laughs> well, Kenny, you sure know how to pick him. You got a nice little girl there. Yes, but she's fickle. She likes Fred McMurray, too. Oh, Fred McMurray, the movie star? Yeah, he's my dream man. She's smarter than I thought she was. Mary. <laughs> so you like uh, Fred McMurray, huh? I'll say. Gee, I'd go to see him even if it wasn't bank night. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Benny, I hope you don't think I'm too fresh, but, uh, well, um... What is it? Come on, don't be bashful. Would you give me a lock of your hair for a souvenir? Ah, you are fickle. But isn't that cute, Mary? She wants a lock of my hair. Why don't you give her the whole wig? <laughs> what, and catch a cold? Some other time, Lena. Say, your girl's all right, Kenny. She's talented, too. I wish you could use her on the program sometime. Oh, yeah? What's she got that I haven't got? Tom <laughs> Hey, that's good, you know. But well, Jack, Jack. What is it, Don? Uh, your guest star's just arrived. Oh, did he get here? Gee, I was worried there for a minute. Keep him in the entrance till I introduce him. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I know that all of you have heard and read about that hazardous transatlantic flight made by Harry Richmond and Dick Merrill, one of the greatest achievements of mechanical skill and human daring the world has ever known. 
This round trip flight was made in exactly 39 hours and 17 minutes. What courage, what stamina to endure the rigors of such a flight. So now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I present to you the man who drove the truck that carried the gas that filled the tank of Harry Richmond's plane. None other than Mr. Samuel T. Butchvener. Mr. Butchvener, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for your appearance on our program this evening. Thank you. Now, how did you feel when you were given this assignment to deliver the gas to Mr. Richmond? Well, I was a little nervous at first, but I knew I could do it. I see. Well, uh, tell us about your trip. Well, after a light breakfast consisting of a New England boiled dinner, mm -hmm. I took on a big cargo of gasoline. Uh, how much? Oh, just oodles of it. <laughs> Oodles of gasoline, I see. Yes, well, anyway, I swung into my truck and took off at exactly 3.10 a.m. From the gas station? Uh-huh. Oh. I made moderate speed through 59th Street until I reached the Queensboro Bridge, and then I let her out. How thrilling. From then on, it was smooth driving until I reached Flushing Boulevard. Oh, Flushing, is that that winding street? No, it's a straight flush. Mm, I see. <laughs> Now, tell me, on your trip to the airport, did you encounter any headwinds? Yes, but it was all right. For buoyancy, I'd filled my truck with 40,000 cannonballs. Hmm. <laughs> now, what kind of a reception did you receive on your arrival at the airport? It was sensational. And what did Mr. Richmond say to you when you delivered the gas? I'll pay you later. I see. <laughs> now, Mr. Bortzman, before I lose my temper entirely... Uh, besides driving a truck, what other notable contribution to aviation have you made? Well, during the World War, I took up flying. Oh, you did? Uh, were you a promising student? Oh, yes. My instructor told me that in no time, I'd make an ace of myself. <laughs> uh, heading back to your journey... Did you have any trouble on your return trip? Yes, I hit a road pocket and was thrown out of my truck into an open manhole. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? An ace in the hole. <laughs> okay, now, just uh, one more question. Did you make this trip alone? No, I had my assistant driver with me, Mr. Borscht. Well, I, uh, I don't want to appear personal, but there has been a report that you and your co-driver have been on rather unfriendly terms. Especially on this last trip. Is there any truth to that? Definitely no. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. In fact, there's never been any jealous flow. See? I get it. So do I, and thank you. <laughs> Is Mr. Borch here with you? Yes, he's sitting right in the audience. Well, put him on a plate and bring him up. <laughs> uh, Mr. Borch, will you come up here, please? Uh, I wish I had known this sooner. So you also made this trip, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, tell me, when you get behind the wheel of a truck, what road do you like to travel best? You mean my favorite highway? Yes. Oh, Jack, give me the road, the white winding highway. Then let me know the unbeaten byway and I'll travel, travel along. Sing it on
baby sings in the motion picture of the same name. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our first program is nearly over, and I'd like to announce our feature attraction for next Sunday night. Most of you have read that outstanding novel by Hervey Allen called Anthony Adverse, and many of you have already seen Warner Brothers' great production. If you haven't, see it this week, because next Sunday night we are going to present our version of that famous classic, our own super, gigantic, stupid, uh, stupendous, <laughs> colossal presentation, Anthony Adverse. Don't miss it, folks. Next Sunday night, you'll cheer. Hooray! You'll laugh. <laughs> you'll cry. <laughs> you'll sneeze. The <laughs> Next Sunday night, folks, when we bring you Anthony Ad Adverse, in addition to the regular newsreel, <laughs> short subjects and bank night, bring your own bank. What thrills, what chills, what glamour. What are you talking about? I don't know. Next Sunday night, Anthony Adverse. <laughs> I have a real piece of news for you tonight, grand good news. The makers of Jell-O now present you with a brand new product, Jell-O chocolate pudding, the best tasting chocolate pudding that's ever come your way. It's smoother, it's creamier, it's more chocolatey. Jell-O chocolate pudding has that swell homemade flavor, the same goodness you used to enjoy when your grandmother made chocolate pudding. And Jell-O chocolate pudding is so easy to make, just mix the contents of the package with some milk in the top of your double boiler and let it cook until it becomes thick and satin smooth. Then when the mixture's cooled, pour it into the sherbet glasses and you're ready to surprise your friends and family with a fine, rich, thoroughly delicious chocolate pudding. Each package gives you six servings and sells for the same low price as Jell-O. Ask your grocer for Jell-O chocolate pudding in the morning. Remember the name, Jell-O chocolate pudding. last number of the first program in the third Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Meanwhile, I'd like to announce that the chap who played the part of the truck driver on tonight's program was Benny Baker of Paramount Pictures. <laughs> and Benny, you... Benny, you certainly played the part of that truck driver very, very well. Well, that's what I used to be before I went into pictures. Don't sell your truck. Why? <laughs> Mary, isn't he nice looking? Nah, he looks like my doctor. Oh, good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny is originated in the NBC studios in Hollywood over the Red Network. This is the National Broadcasting Company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.